Uh, we want to get right to David Yeomans. He's again live on the ground this morning. He's in Houma, Louisiana, which is about an hour away from New Orleans. David, it, we can see that the storm is picking up speed this morning. What factors are contributing to this development? Yeah, good morning, guys. It's really a, a perfect storm, if you will, over the Gulf of Mexico of extremely warm, deep water, very favorable conditions in the upper level environment, and really nothing holding back Hurricane Ida from now expected to become the strongest hurricane to ever hit Louisiana on record with 155 mile per hour winds by this afternoon. This is happening also on the 16 year anniversary of Katrina down to the day. Let me walk you over here. We're on the top level of this sturdy concrete parking garage and over in this direction you can actually see one of what's pretty common around this area. It's an above ground cemetery. Oftentimes in these swampy areas, you really can't dig below ground because it's just water a couple feet down. So these above ground cemeteries, uh, like we saw in Hurricane Katrina, actually can be the focus of when we see flooding, uh, you know, things can happen to these. Uh, when we see uh, dangerous winds, you can also see destruction of grave sites at times. We're also right next to the Homa General Hospital, uh, where they're already having a busy time due to COVID in this area. We have seen the winds pick up a little bit. We've seen some 30 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. We're in the middle right now of kind of a lighter rain band on the outside of this storm. We're only 80 miles, though, from the eye wall and from the eye itself. So things are going to be going downhill here pretty quickly. We expect a landfall about 1 or 2 o'clock this afternoon, as it looks right now. And then shortly thereafter, we should see the eye right here. So we'll be reporting from home all morning in your newscasts and also even after the newscasts end live on KXAN.com. I'm meteorologist David Yeomans down in Haribone Parish, Louisiana. Back to you guys. David, before we let you go here, I want to give the, the people at home some perspective here. 150 to 155 mile per hour winds. That's a strong tornado and uh, tornadoes obviously cause significant damage and that's just winds in matter of seconds to maybe minutes. But where you're going to be at, you're going to experience 150 mile per hour winds to tornado like winds for hours on end. And what can what kind of devastation could we see in an area if it does make landfall at 150, 155 mile per hour winds? Again, a uh, potential is still there for a category five storm. It's seven miles per hour shy of reaching that category. What kind of damage could we see with the, your area that you're going to be at with as, as well as the infrastructure. I'm worried about the, the ports uh, that are nearby as well sure. as the uh, nuclear power plant. What are you thinking? Well, there are a lot of concerns and you said it well, Sean, getting a, a tornado force win for, you know, 10, 15 seconds is very different on a structural level than getting that same level of wind for three, six, eight hours. Wind stress builds over time. And the longer that buildings and structures are subjected to winds of 150 miles per hour, the more likely they are to fail. In a high-end Category 4 or Category 5 storm, you see even well-built framed homes have total roof collapse and total wall collapse. That means if anybody is sheltering here, and we fear that some people have ignored voluntary or mandatory evacuation orders, uh, that means their houses, unless they're built of brick or concrete, will likely be completely destroyed. As you also mentioned, oil platforms, uh, oil tankers, power plants, nuclear power plants southwest of New Orleans. That one in particular is supposed to withstand 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, ocean level rise, uh, but there's some question of if this could push the limits of that. We also have oil receiving facilities, oil tanks, at those ports in the southeastern coast of Louisiana. Uh, those are sure, I fear to say it, but those are sure to see some spills, some failures. Uh, this could quickly become, Sean, an ecological disaster in addition to the human toll that we're expecting. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's definitely a sad to see, especially uh, this all being timed out with, with, with COVID uh, and, and of course the, the hospitals. Horrible again, timing. With, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. of course the infrastructure issues. And then we got the storm surge, 10 to 15, 16 feet of storm surge in the forecast for that area. And then as we've been talking about all morning long, they could see upwards of 10 to 15 inches of rain on top of that. So definitely a devastating situation. We are again on that western side of the system over 100 to 200 miles away and we're not going to feel any impacts here at home. We're going to experience uh, mainly dry conditions today with a few showers, but let's go in depth on what's going on with Hurricane Ida right now. A powerful catastrophic 
Category 4 storm, 150 mile per hour winds. So since you last checked in with us moments ago, it was 145 mile per hour winds. So it's already continuing to intensify. And a Category 5 storm is not out of the question. Right now, the forecast has it as 155 mile per hour winds, which is very close to Category uh, 5 system upon landfall again early this afternoon. The eye wall, that's where the strongest winds are, and we could see that occurring as early as lunchtime again in the southeastern Louisiana coastline here. You can see the heavy rain associated with it. This model showing it eventually moving up towards the northern part of the state and then eventually into the Mississippi Valley there. Here at home, dry conditions for us. We're not going to experience any impacts from this other than the very extreme outer bands of that flow here will experience more winds at the northwest and a few showers. But again, we're watching for the threat of tornadoes on the outer bands of, the, of Hurricane Ida, as well as the risk of storm surge 10 to 15 feet above sea level. Major catastrophic impacts we're going to be watching here throughout the day. I actually also overlaid the winds that we're seeing with the system right now. Still not experiencing those tropical storm force wind gusts, but they are hours away from experiencing that. And then early in the afternoon, the catastrophic winds will go more in depth on that coming up in first warning weather.